This video will briefly cover creating Adobe Repose 3D extrusions for web designers. Adobe Repose is a way of creating easy 3D geometry from text layers, paths, and selections. Starting off in Photoshop here, say I wanted to create this web banner. Now this web banner contains many objects. We have 3D layers as well as 2D layers, as well as animating 3D objects. All of this was created and composited in Photoshop CS5 Extended. Today I'm going to show you how to create one of these 3D extrusions from a text layer and then finally animate it. Back in Photoshop here, we'll go ahead and start with this file. Now this file contains all the icons, smart object icons, as well as all the text layers. Let's go ahead and take a look at this live text layer here. I'll collapse this down to make this a little easier to see. In my 3D panel is the quickest way to create 3D geometry. I can first select my source. You can see if I pop open this menu, I can use my selected layer, which in this case is a text layer, my work path, my selection, or come directly from a file. Go ahead and select 3D Repose object and click Create. Now you'll see that we're popped into the Repose dialog. Now in this dialog is where we would create our extrusions. In the upper left hand corner you'll see many presets here that I can begin to click through to start visualizing what types of parameters I can be adjusting. I'm going to go ahead and come into this extrude area of my dialog and show you how I can manually adjust the extrusion. I can add depth to this. I can go ahead and drop this, the back face scale down. I can add a twist to this. Very quickly, you can see how this affects the real 3D geometry. Let's go ahead and reset this. And here I'll show you shear. Shearing is moving the back and front planes with respect to each other. You can do it on the X or Y. And as well as bend, I can define a certain reference point and bend on the X or the Y axes. Great. Now let's go ahead and drop down the extrusion a little. For this project, I'm just going to create a real simple extrusion. You can see here that I can actually use my 3D axis tool in this dialog to precisely position my 3D object. When I'm happy with that, I'll click OK. And now I'm back in Photoshop. I can use my 3D panel to start to add materials to it, edit the lights, edit the position, as well as create the 3D animation. Starting off in my materials panel here, let's go ahead and remove this default texture. And I'm going to go ahead and start changing the colors. By clicking on the diffuse picker there, I can easily change the color of my 3D geometry. Let's give it more a, of a yellow look. OK. And you can see that I've adjusted the color, the diffuse color, of my front inflation material up here in my materials list. I can just drop the same color for the different faces of the materials by going through that same exercise, or I can actually use the new material dropper tool here. Use my Alt key to load that color or load that material into my dropper, and I can come onto any face here and drop into the different parts of my geometry. Okay, so now I'm happy with that. A note here on rendering. When I'm happy with this position, and happy with the extrusion and the materials that I've just added, I'll have to remember to kick it into the ray tracer. What the ray tracer will do is render for the final shadows and the final lighting. I'll quickly show you where that lives. In my scene panel, I can come in here to the quality menu and choose ray trace draft or ray trace final. Give it a couple seconds. And you can see here, the progressive rendering is starting to render for the final lighting and the final shadows. But for now, let's go ahead and pause this and put it back into the interactive or painting mode where, where interaction will be much faster. And I'm going to show you how I can quickly create an animation. Down here in my animation panel, I'm going to open up this exact layer. And you'll see here that I have many different 3D properties that I can animate. 3D object position, camera position, render settings, and cross-section. The first thing I'll do is create a keyframe for my object position. Let's 
go ahead and move this off screen. Now I'll go ahead and pull this out to maybe 10 frames. Let's change the position here using my 3D axes. And I'll go ahead and pull it out a little further here. So you can see here that I can start to build out my animation in Photoshop for um, each of the 3D text objects. Go ahead and move this and let's add my final keyframe. And slide this object off screen. And there you have it. Um, after I'm done, I want to make sure that I have the ray tracer on for rendering out the video. And I can do this in two ways. I can go into my render settings uh, dialog here and check render video for final output. Um, or I can actually just change my quality settings in my scene panel to ray trace final rendering. Now having the option set in render settings ensures that the ray tracer will be used at export. So not only can I export this 3D animation out as a video, but also I can add an alpha channel to turn off the background and import um, this 3D text animation directly into my Flash project. Um, in Flash Pro CS5, you can now see this video directly on your stage uh, with options to playback as well.